What is going on, everybody? I don't know if this is going to work out, but we're going to give it a try here. I want to demonstrate a ghost dry brush to you. First look, exclusive to my YouTube subscribers, of course. This is the larger of the two sizes that will be offered. You can see here it's got a nice softness to it, the same kind of nylon as the ghost brushes that many people are currently loving. So this will be available on Kickstarter in January of 2020. So hopefully you're very, very excited about that because I am. And I want to demonstrate to you how to use a dry brush and make some pretty cool bases. Uh, we're going to just be playing around here. So hopefully you enjoy this. These bases here are just MDF bases I got. And what I did is I glued rocks and cork and used Vallejo putties. And that's how we got it. So let me show you some of the products here. These will be linked in the description below. We got thick mud from Vallejo. This one I used was the brown mud. Awesome, awesome product for doing bases. Uh, so first you glue on cork. Then you glue on like a mixture of your little rocks and gravel. Then you put a layer of your thick mud and let it dry. And then the colors we just kind of messed around with, what they are is gray primer with Vallejo Game Wash dipping formula black. I've been loving this. I cannot find it on Amazon or anything. Like, I don't even recognize this label on Google Image Search for the Dipping Formula Game Wash. Uh, it's so awesome if you can get a hold of it. It's $11, and just for comparison, like, that's a huge, you hear that? That's a huge pot of basically null oil. It's really, really good for thinning down washes and also darkening them up and you mix it with uh, some flow improver from Vallejo, you can really stretch it out. And what I did here, let me move some of this out of the way. This is a mixture of some contrast paints, just some brown contrast paint, and then also some dipping formula black wash. You can kind of see the different colors in there. So super simple, quick, easy bases. And now what we want to do is try to kick them up a notch. So we're not, this isn't planned out. We're just going to try this out as my first kind of top down, you know, painting tutorial. So first up, I think I want to try out some of this Logoth orange. No, Jacaro orange. Jacaro orange. So we're going to shake that up. And now the dry brush. When we're dry brushing, we're going to be doing one direction sometimes and back and forth other times, but I'll demonstrate it here. So when I'm doing one, a directional dry brush, I'm going down across the thing here, lifting it up, coming back over, placing it down and going back. So it's one direction, always the same direction, up, over, down, back, but it'll be fast. So you can do it that fast without actually going back and forth. Now when you're going back and forth, obviously you're going that way, and then you're going, so you'd be going that way, and then that way. And that's going to pick out every edge, but if you just do one direction, it's going to look like this. And you get different effects. So this is a brand new Ghost dry brush. Very beautiful. It's going to be obviously stained after this. But you'll be surprised, they hold up pretty darn well. Here is a used Ghost dry brush and still holding up amazing. But I have been using this bad boy on everything. And you can see there, it's still going strong. So you lose the white color, obviously you're a little harder on the dry brushes, but it's been working so good 
and I have been airbrush or not airbrushing, dry brushing everything I can get my hands on, trying to test this to make sure these things are nice and valuable for you guys. So here we go. We have Jakiro Orange. Now, when I did this base, we'll do it on this one here. This might not work out great, but we'll see. You can see the cork here has a lip to it. So we're gonna actually treat that as a different surface. We might actually treat this part here, which is very rocky, as also a different surface. That could be either rocks of a different kind or maybe this piece broken up. But what we're gonna do, just take a little dollop here on the brush, and we're gonna do little circular motions on the napkin. This is gonna get it off for the most part. We want as much of it off as we can. These napkins are compliments of Taco Bell. So if you go to Taco Bell, take extra napkins if you like. So that should be good. Looks like doing it on my finger here doesn't leave much. So we're gonna hit the lower part here and we're doing just a single direction. So down, up, over, down, 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 down. And you can see the orange is starting to pick up there. And we're gonna hit the side here. This side we're gonna do back and forth just because we've got such a small area there. We're trying to just get some pigment down in there. And it doesn't matter if you get it up on this because in nature, everything's gonna kind of dirty up each other. So it's okay to kind of over spray, you know, over spill onto the other objects. So there we go. Looks like we're gonna need a little more paint. Do some circles, get the paint off on the napkin. You can test it on your hand. Looks good. So there we go. We're gonna just put it there in the corner. And hopefully, hopefully the camera didn't cut out right there, but put it in the corner. Oh, there's another corner over here. And that's it, right? So we built up some kind of orange. Not the easiest to see. Could have went a brighter color. But next on this base, we're gonna jump to Tau Light Ochre. A fun thing about dry brushing, you don't actually need to wash this brush. These brushes are soft and absorbent. So when you do wash it, it's gonna almost give you a different effect. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to wash it when you're done, but for right now, there's so little paint on it, it's not gonna make any difference. And you're gonna, basically, if you wet this brush before you use it, it's gonna give you a much softer kind of blend. Uh, if you ever dry brush and you get kind of that chalky kind of finish, maybe try dampening your brush, drying it off the best you can, and then using it, and you might actually find you like it a little better. So this one, we're gonna go across the top of this base. It's the same base. Uh, see if we can get a little bit more exciting contrast here on camera. But we're bringing it across. This is still just in one single direction. And hopefully, so down, 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 down. Sometimes on the edge, we'll go back the opposite direction just because we want to get that edge a little bit. There we go, we're kind of creating the rock. And we'll go back and forth because this isn't picking up quite as much as I was expecting. But like I said, we're just playing with it. I just wanted to show you how fun these dry brushes are, how fun it is to dry brush, and hopefully we get some cool effects here that people will enjoy. So this was kind of an all over dry brush and we kind of muddied that up there. So that's fun, starting to build it. Still not washing the brush. So let's jump on to this one. And just to demonstrate something, we're gonna use Bane Blade Brown. And hopefully this will work out good. So all we're doing is just adding interesting dry brush colors. One thing too, I'm using air paint some of the time here, which are 
a little thinner, but that's okay. Just make sure you get it off your brush, rub, 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 rub. Check it on your hand. See, because it's an air paint, it's causing that smooth. So that's that smooth blend I was talking about that you can get with it, but it's not actually ideal for dry brushing. So maybe don't use the airbrush paints for this, but we're just having fun. So we're gonna go, let's go back and forth but we'll try not to dig it in as much. And be extra rough on the brush so you can really see it working. And look, that's pounding it into the base, still holding its shape beautifully. And there we go. So we're building up some color there. I'm not super happy with the colors I chose to demonstrate this over top of these kind of orangish red. This next one is green ochre. We're gonna do this one a couple of places. Here's a little tip. If you just put it right onto your napkin, it starts to absorb out the water and you can still just dry brush with it. So if you have a dropper bottle, you can just drop it right onto your napkin. So there we go, let's see what's going on here. Okay, so that looks fine. And let's try this one here. We're gonna just bring it right over some of the edges here. So that meant that's lightening up pretty cool. I definitely like the way the kind of brown and black Bases are coming out a little better than my kind of Martian Earth ones so far. But so we're hitting the corners. For some reason, the darn camera turns off when I don't move the mouse. But hopefully you've stuck along this far. So anyway, we're kind of just hitting a little bit of Tau Ochre here on the corners. And then wipe it off. Still, once again, I haven't washed that brush, it's fine. Let's go straight to Celestial Gray. I love this one for dry brushing rocks. And I pretty much love this color. It's a really, really good base paint. It's a light gray, but I mean, it makes for a quick, easy base coat to do white. It's, it's on the cooler side, you can see it's bluer. Uh, if you wanted like a warmer gray, you could go with something like a Rackarth Flesh. So there we go. We got all the blue, wiping it off the dry brush. And then hopefully you will enjoy this. So we're doing it one direction. And just picking out the rocks. There we go. And we'll get the side a little bit. And that's it. So that looks really cool. So let's just stick with that. Do one more little dip here in the celestial gray. Wipe, 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 wipe onto the napkins, paper towels, newspaper. Here's another one. This one, let's do celestial gray on this rock, and then we'll do a different color on these two rocks. So we'll go back and forth. Because of the soft, round brush, actually, yeah, this is perfect. So because it's a soft dry brush and not a hard one, you see how fast I got a smooth, almost natural blend to the rock face here? But you can still see the dark shadows underneath. So that's just a really cool way and a big advantage of having the soft dry brush. You could still use a flat dry brush, of course, if that's what you prefer. But I don't sell those. So if you want to check mine out, you'll have a great time learning the new advantages of having this style and shape dry brush. So this one here, we're going to wipe, 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 wipe. Let's check it on the inside of the hand. Okay, that's way too much paint still on that. So let's keep 
wiping that off. Let's check again. And it looks like we built up quite a bit of paint in here, but it should be fine anyway. So we're gonna just finish the other rock and kind of blend it back and forth with that cooler side. This is almost like a warmer side to the rock, just for fun. These are just gonna be bases for some troll models I'm painting for my eBay store. So hopefully if you're into buying painted trolls, you'll go check that out, link in the description. So there you go, just building up a cool rock here. You can go back and forth with dry brushing and washes, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, let's try this one, Ogren Camo. Let me get the rack art flush out of the way. And this one might be a little bit of a wild card. There we go. Let's get a nice dollop on there. And here we are. Wipe, 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 right. You've seen it a lot of times. This isn't a basically a how-to dry brush video. This is just demonstrating a new product coming out, a new line of dry brushes. It is really, really fun. It does really awesome stuff. And obviously once it gets into your hands, you're gonna be able to do all kinds of cool stuff too. So make sure you follow along for the Kickstarter. So this is Ogren Camo. We're gonna go ahead and test it on the back of the glove. And it still got quite a bit of paint in here, but that's okay. We can keep wiping it, but we're actually gonna use that because we want to see how much it changes our black brown here. So I'm gonna go one direction from this way. So you can see here, just I'll do it right down the middle so you can see. See that? And actually that's kind of cool. Maybe we'll do it kind of selectively, like a, almost like maybe some life has grown in there. This could be kind of like a swamp land. We'll just kind of build it up in the streets. So that's kind of cool. Maybe we'll do one back and forth over here. So when you're doing a base, you're just adding a bunch of crazy fun interest. It should be a totally fun time. And just to show you one more quick little demonstration, let's go all the way to dead white. So this is a rotten white from Game Effects, Vallejo. Haven't used this one in a while. When you're dry brushing white, you're very much more likely to get that powdery uh, look to your models, of course, because it's white, and that's just what happens. But we're going to try to get that off. Now this time, let's go back to this base here. So we got two different grays, and we're going to use this white to tie it both together. And remember, this is still the same brush that hasn't been washed yet. We'll wash it when the video's over. And I don't, well, maybe I'll wash it on camera, I don't know. I'll watch it when the video is over, but the brush will hold up just fine. So what we're going to do here, this is going to be a little bit of white dry brush just to tie this together. And you can go real slow because it's a soft dry brush. You could just do, you could drag it real slow and it'll pick up those textures. This is a soft touch I'm doing. I'm really trying to focus on just hitting the edges. And there you go. You can see a lot of cool stuff happening here. Just a little bit of white. Uh, just for fun, let's go back with a little bit of white here and see what we can pop out. And there you go. Kind of like a off concrete desert, Mars, Mesa kind of thing. But another fun thing with bases too, of course, is you can just go back and forth and add washes, add tufts. All you want to do is make it interesting. You could add blood effects, gem colors, you know, the bright gloss clear paints to make pools. You could do Nurgle's Raw. I'll show you how to make an Admech base this month. 
for the bases I do for my ad mech because all month long I want to be trying to get everybody excited for the ghost dry brush coming in January. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave any questions below. I'm going to wash this brush and in the next video we'll use the same one and you'll see that it's still holding up beautifully. So talk to you soon.